Hello guys, and welcome back to another episode of The Metaphiles. Today we have a very special guest coming all the way from Canada. It is no other than the Queen of the North, Emily. Emily, how are you doing today? I'm great. How are you, Ian? Doing excellent, as always. So, if you'd like to just take the intro here, kind of tell us about yourself, when you started playing, some of your biggest achievements, that'd be awesome. Okay, yeah. So I started playing uh, in the beginning of 2015. Um, my ex got me into the game, and after playing for a little bit uh, just at home, um, he, w he went to buy some pieces, and he connected with Jason from Married with Clicks, and he came over to our house and uh, sold us some stuff. Nice. And, and when he was here, he's like, you know, we play this game in the shop if you guys ever want to come to a store and play. So um, I ventured out to play and learn that we were doing a whole bunch of stuff wrong, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's how it always goes, right? Yeah. And then I learned about Canadian Nationals. Um, it was about six months later. So I decided to build a team and actually go and try and compete. I um, actually made it through one of the qualifiers to play in the second day. I ended up like coming 31st out of 32nd or something stupid, but like I just <laughs> fell in love with the competitive scene at that hey, point. Hey, placing is placing, you know, any cut, we'll take it, right? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you were also, yeah. if I'm not mistaken, the Canadian, Canadian national champion, is that correct? I sure am. I am, I am the current reigning Canadian national champion. Um, we'll see what happens in, a, in about a month and a month and a half when Canadian nationals happens again, if I can hold the title or not. But <laughs> Got to yeah. defend it. You got it. I take it Definitely. you won't be playing Thanos again, though, right? No, no Thanos this <laughs> no time. More Thanos. Gotcha. His reign's over. Got to bring in a new king. And that is what yeah. we are going to be talking about tonight, guys. Emily has... A very very cool build that we're gonna go over something that a lot of players have advised against for some reasons that we'll get into later so you guys are gonna to want to stay tuned this is gonna be a lot of fun so Emily before we get into the team specifically can you give us kind of like an overview of the type of player you are are you an offensive defensive control style player what are your what are you typically drawn to I'm drawn to like pretty aggressive stuff so I'm the type of person that when I find a team, I kind of stick with it and like tweak it a little bit as new sets come out and as we go. Um, but I typically stay with it until rotation. So I was very much like a Sam Cap, Shredder, Overdrive, Drop-Off team with ID cards. And, and I was um, also a big Vulture player. I think I was one of the first ones to win a, one of the Rock Online qualifiers with him, taking out a, a team <laughs> to, to win that. So I'm very much a get in and fight type of person, but fan of, Playing Thanos at Canadian Nats um, definitely helped me learn to be a more defensive player a little bit and hanging back and, and doing the, the, the barrier stuff, which is not typically my style, but I think it's made me a better player by playing a different style and getting to know more different things. Sure. Yeah, it's two, complete differently, or two completely different worlds, excuse me. Uh, Thanos, obviously, with very heavy barrier tech. You know, he's not around as much as he used to be. He got eroded. He got thrown in the dirt. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, playing offensively against that was definitely challenging. You saw him all the time at Worlds, which you actually played in uh, Worlds this last year and brought that similar Thanos team to Worlds. And how did you do there? Oh, my gosh. I, I was so proud of how I did. I went undefeated in Swiss, and I only gave up maybe 500 points or something. Oh, it, was, wow. it was crazy. <laughs> it was crazy. <laughs> and then um, I faced Caleb in a mirror match in top 32, and he got a, uh, a super sense roll that I didn't get, which means he took out one figure. And it happened to be with my tarot card flip, giving him the, oh. the bonus to, to, to super oh. senses. But... <laughs> Oh no! But that's okay. And I was the only <laughs> oh I was the only one that went undefeated um, in Swiss that that got cut uh, uh, didn't make the top thirty two so um, that puts me in seventeenth place I was <laughs> so pretty not proud. bad yeah excellent yeah um, we actually uh, talked with Caleb previously here. He hadn't mentioned that specifically, but I know I've talked to him personally, talked about the game, and it was like, yep, you know, it's a dice game is about how he described it. 
it was back and forth and I got a little luckier and sometimes that's just how things shake out right yeah it was a literal mirror like I would take this piece of his he would take this piece of mine like it was like... <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh yeah, yeah it was great who went uh who went first in that match I honestly don't remember uh, that's fair this is like we're talking like a year <laughs> ago at this point folks so but you know thought maybe so oh, uh, that's, that's one of the reasons I blog because like I have such a bad memory <laughs> that oh, sure. I can look back on my games by <laughs> from what I've written in my blog post. So <laughs> yeah, definitely having having some records definitely helps because I mean sometimes it's like thirty minutes later it's like yeah I don't even know what I did I I kind of just went in and that was that. <laughs> so yep. <laughs> well, so if Thanos is off the table, what is your current build? And I guess, why did you choose to play the team you did? If you want to just go over everything very quickly here. Yeah, so um, I'm on a uh, 145 prize APOC team. So I know I know it's not the popular opinion. A lot of people aren't playing APOC at such a, a big number, but I just, I like them at that number. So I've got him with Genesis, and she's at the lower point. She's at the 35. Um, I've got Star Sapphire with her pink ring, um, the Legacy Green Lantern at 20 points. I have a Carnage Silver Surfer, Silver Surfer, um, and I put the red symbiote on him uh, so that it gives him blades so that he's got the APOC rollout because he's an X-Men. <laughs> oh, yeah. Of course he is. <laughs> of course Obviously. he is. <laughs> yeah. How could I forget that? Oh, my goodness. Right? That's awesome, um, though. And- <laughs> and Prime Hulk with the cloak. Oh, okay. So you're playing Prime Hulk. Interesting. Yeah, a lot of yeah. a lot of stuff to uh, kind of dismantle with this build. Get into. Um, so I guess my first question in regards to the build is: What is this team looking to do in a perfect situation? What uh, are you moving up? Are you creeping up? Are you letting your opponent get the first attack off? Are you going for an alpha strike? What is the the general plan for this? Are you picking map? Not picking map? Um, I'm Sorry. okay picking map or not picking map. Um, I'm I'm really okay either way. If I like, I do like being able to go first. Obviously, who doesn't? Um, it's true. Um, I tend to move a block out a little bit, uh, especially on the smaller maps. Like. If I can move him out a bit and then he can almost reach anywhere on the next turn, it's fantastic. Um, and because he's so big, a lot of times I find that I can hopefully keep him protected. I mean, it all depends on matchup, of course. You know, if I'm facing a switch or something, I don't want her to be able to come out and ruin me. And yeah, and no kidding. <laughs> kill me in one shot, right? <laughs> oh, that is rough. Yeah, taking yeah. away the stop clicks like that is tough, but... You know, it's it's interesting. I know the sentiment kind of going around the space right now is to avoid the higher point, like one man army style builds because of things like the stop sign, which can just barrier around you and shut off improved movement. Um, so you're saying it's not the popular pick. Do you run into that situation ever? Is it as brutal as people say it is? It is. So um, oh. <laughs> I, well, I like, especially once they picked off the, the littler guys, right? Then I have no way to get out of it. I, I played a similar version of the team. This is a, a tweaked version of it at the Huntington's event um, where I had, I didn't have the Prime Hulk or the Green Lantern, and instead I had a Felix Faust. Um, sure. And you're right. So that was, that was the difference there. And I had a Prime Destroyer on the line, on, on the side, who, helped a lot if I could get him in because he could bust the barrier that somebody put around me, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, no kidding. Like, Definitely helps out. And so, yeah, yeah with no, uh, no destroyer on the build and Hulk taking over, have you felt that that's like a pretty solid trade-off? Is there, like, is Hulk getting his value consistently, I suppose? Definitely. Like, yeah. being able to, to heal him up and... Um, he's part of my solution to help me get through opposing barrier, right? Because sure. I don't really have much of that without it. So definitely. He's, he's definitely helped fill that spot. All right. Yeah, I like that. Uh, you know, I've heard a lot of talk about Prime Hulk, but I have honestly not seen very many people playing him, especially post Arata. Like, it was through the roof with comments on Facebook about like, this guy's going to break the game. And then the errata happened. 
And all of a sudden, like, uh, I think people are, it's weird, but people are moving away from him. I know a lot of people are big on Mad Jim, uh, myself as well. But, uh, yeah. So playing a one-man army, playing the Hulk, and then the Carnage Surfer, is he as bad as they're saying he is? Like, just, you know, super hard to deal with figure. What's kind of his role in the team? Are you hoping that they go for Carnage Surfer? Are you trying to make them go for APOC? What do your opponents typically do when they play against you? My so I'm finding um, in play testing that my my opponents are typically going after my little guys first. They're going after the Star Sapphire, the Green Lantern, getting my my ring bearers out so that I can't make stop signs and and chainsaws and boots and stuff, right? True. Um, and they're easier points. They they don't have the rollouts that the rest of my team does. So I find that that they tend to go after those pieces first. Definitely. Yeah, support is just such a mainstay in the game right now that definitely makes sense. Um, is there anything specifically that you're trying to answer in the meta with this team? Like, is there teams that maybe you built this specifically against or just problematic figures that you were like, hey, this should work against that? Or is this just a flat out general meta guess? Like, what's the, uh, I guess, the thinking behind playing a one man army? This is my enjoying rollouts, and this team has a <laughs> lot of rollouts. So, because I've got shape change on half the people, because so I'm lately in playtesting, I've actually been putting Warlock Sword on both APOC and Genesis. So, I've got shape change Ooh. on both of them, shape change on the, on the surfer as well. Um, and I've got the, if, if we're close, I have the, the parry from APOC on them all, and then, um, if they're on stop clicks, then I've got also super senses. Like it's just massive rollout team. And if I can hit my rollouts, you're yeah. not taking any points. <laughs> <laughs> that is very true. I know uh, very recently there has been, well, it makes sense with how prevalent Carnage Surfer is. There's been a lot of uh, resurgence for the Necro Sword. Have you found, have you play tested against that? Has that caused you a lot of issues if it is generally based around rollouts for your team? Yeah, so none of my play test buddies have been using Necrosword. So Ooh. I, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Canadian meta is a little bit different, right? People don't like, a lot of people don't like to, to, to go with what the masses are playing. So sure. I find that facing things locally is very different than what you'll see at a, a lot of the states and stuff. Like we have sense. a lot of high level player, high level players, but the, they just play different stuff. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Uh, I'm not sure if he's local to you or not. Uh, Devin, Devin Owens, he's always playing some super interesting stuff. I love looking at his builds. Love listening to his podcast as well. Like he, uh, he's always got something wacky. And I think lately he's been playing like an animal build with Prime Beast Boy on it. So. Yeah. yeah, you saying that there's a different meta in Canada, I 100% believe it. <laughs> yeah, no, my, my playtest team, like me, Devin, and Mike, and occasionally Jay Solomon, like we get together um, at sometimes one of our houses or we'll go to a shop um, that, that's local and we just will practice competitive against each other. So I've got a very good, very good group <laughs> to, awesome. to playtest with, yeah. Love it. So I suppose... We might have already answered this here with the Necro Sword, but what are uh, some of the biggest counters that you're running into for your team? What really causes issue? Obviously, like Scarlet Witch, I'm sure, but you know that's everybody, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah, Scarlet Witch and and um, and against Devin. Devin is really big on Cosmo, so it's Power Erasers in general. Mm, yeah, are, are a thing, you know, because he can pick to to get rid of either my um, Invincible on those stop clicks or um blades so i don't have my parry roll like it's <laughs> yeah oh getting rid of blades i didn't even think about that yeah that's uh -huh. <laughs> that's really cool so that just yeah. like blanket shuts it off yeah that shuts off a whole roll on all of them so sure yeah yeah you know, and with... then of course that that stop sign that we we're talking about earlier as well yeah those are those are the the big ones yeah oh ick stop sign <laughs> <laughs> So uh, I guess um, to kind of hop into the next question, we already covered it a little bit here. Uh, the Prime Hulk being your choice of Prime. Um, what made you say, like, 
Prime Hulk over Destroyer. And how often is he like, I, I'm just curious, like how quickly is he going off? Is does your opponent deal with him often or do they let him be how like I'm just curious about like his entire functionality like within your team. So yeah, so it, yeah, it, it, in play testing, I'm finding that he's um, kind of left alone a little bit, unless unless they're around with with enough attacks to like kind of take him out in one go, right? So if I've got him healed up, then it, it takes quite a few attacks to get through him, right? So yeah, yeah, um, I do miss having Destroyer on the side. I will say, <laughs> but um, having him on board, so the, the tweak of, of Green Lantern Hulk over Faust is, um, it's another threat on the board versus another support on the board. Sure. So, right, so now I've got another big attacker that can do a whole bunch of damage versus somebody who is giving me an outwit and a prob, right? And kind of throwing off your outwit and problem for flex, but um, and I'm, I I like that I have another damage dealer on the on the board. And again, that's my aggressive style coming out of wanting to come in and smash face and do a million damage to you. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely, yeah, that that totally makes sense. Kind of uh, you know splitting your threats up a bit more and saying like, okay, well, I know you don't want to deal with this Hulk. You're getting 10 points for it. But the thing is, is he's going to exist. So, I mean, you have to deal with him eventually. And then, you know, probably there probably are some instances where Prime Hulk is pulling some aggression away from your, like, bigger hitters. And then that helps them. So, in a way, he almost is a support piece. Getting your opponent to use actions is fantastic, especially for such little cost. Yeah, and with the cloak on him, he could be a tie-up for 10 points, too, with that plasticity, oh, right? Oh, hey, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> really don't want to deal with this. And then, if I'm not mistaken, all of his defense powers are protected outwit, correct? They are, so that includes his willpower that like, oh. he's traded with. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. hey, that's nice. <laughs> I didn't yeah. even think about that. Yeah. I love it. So, oh, as far as like the one-man army archetype goes... You're saying that it's alive and well. It is totally fine. You can get away with it. I imagine it takes some positioning, you know, around the things like stop sign, around any kind of threats like moving into the wrong area, and then boom, he's got his whole team attacking you. Huh. That is interesting because so many people have just shut this idea down. So I'm really interested in uh, seeing how this build does at your, you said provincials were, or provincials? How do you say provincials. that word? Provincials. Provincials. Provincials, yeah. We're My provincials it, is next Saturday on the 15th. So. Awesome. Do you know what anybody else is playing? Do you know what kind to expect? I mean, I know Devin's playing his that animal team with the, the maggots and the beast boy. Um, I don't know what version of it he's playing. I don't know if he's going to be able to find the uh, Masters of Evil Chases for the... <laughs> yeah. He's the... been kind of playtesting online. Um Mike is playing a Masters of Evil team, though, so we'll see. <laughs> we'll see they how that nasty. ends up going. Yeah, so so th that's mostly what I've been playtesting against because they're local and they're what I've been playing with, but yeah. Sure. Awesome. Well, do you have any tips for players considering trying your team or maybe a similar build, maybe even just a similar play style with uh, kind of how off the wall the one-man army build is considered right now? I mean, it's it's more of a, a general thing of, you know, just getting practice in, knowing what your figures do. Um, not, you know, like I've pretty much got it ingrained in my head what my stuff can do. I don't have to constantly be checking the cards and, right? And, yeah. And, right? If I know what my stuff does, then it's it becomes just like an easy, it's just like second nature. It's just, it's, you're just doing it. And then you can kind of focus more on what your opponent's doing and, that and not is have to like remember exactly right because like it's remembering all the rollouts it's remembering the parry it's remembering the healing for hulk it's remembering the healing for, for carnage surfer it's you know remembering your shape change and and it's, it's a lot to remember all the little things yeah, and those little things can be such an advantage, but I will say one advantage you have is you don't have to remember to or to roll for destroyer. <laughs> <laughs> Which is I like was getting 
really good at it. Like now I need to remember the Green Lantern once per turn being able to roll a D6 to raise somebody's defense. That one I keep forgetting now because I'm not used to it. That's the newest the newest tweak that I I need to remember. Yeah. Yeah. I I don't know what it is. I'm not sure what kind of mojo is around it, but for whatever reason, remembering to roll for Prime Destroyer is like I don't know why it's so hard, but it is. Even when it's like, obviously I have this on my build, it's still just like, yeah, I, I completely forgot, like for a whole turn. <laughs> and then you remember it like during your next turn, you're like, oh, I could have called the destroyer. <laughs> <laughs> well, like I, I've gotten so good at remembering my destroyer. I think I only forgot it once the whole Huntington's event. But there was a game that I was playing on stream um, with Mike Eskew where I was reminding him about his destroyer. <laughs> That is very kind so, of you, at least. <laughs> That's what he was saying, too. And I'm like, but Destroyer's technically not up remembering. It is if true. If I want to keep the game state proper, like, I, I need to say something. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is awesome. So you're saying, like, the biggest thing is practice. Uh, for these builds, are there certain maps that you look at or even just styles a map? What's your general theory on that for players considering something like this? Yeah, so I I I always put Fountain of Asgard on my team on on every build sheet because there's zero blocking on that map. So if I'm facing a Scarlet Witch with Jim Jaspers and the Angler, they Ooh, have yes. to rely on their objects or terrain that they're putting out in order to get that off to be able to to get the whole thing in place where they need to be. So I always I like make sure that. that that is one of my maps. And then um, one of the newer ones, I can't even remember the name of it off the top of my head. It's on, I sent you my build. It's, it's got a bunch of um, elevated. So it's yes, give me just maps. a second here. Uh, yes. Is it the Council of Red Chambers? Yeah. So oh, I'm liking okay. that one for um, Carnage Surfer. Yeah, lots of oh. elevated there, lots of pockets. And then uh, you said going first or second. You prefer going first, but picking map isn't a huge detriment to your team. No, no, no. Typically, I'm I'm okay either way because like APOC is is big and beefy enough that sure. Even if I'm going second and you want to come out and come at me, if I've got APOC near the front and you kind of got to get around him to get to my other people, like it's it seems okay to me. Sure. I love it. And then it looks like the last map you had on was Wakanda, which is that a similar line of thinking where Scarlet Witch only has a few pieces of barrier to Angler to? Yeah, yeah. That, so that's a new one. I haven't actually practiced on that one yet, but it's one that I was looking at. I was like, hmm, maybe we'll try this one. <laughs> oh, sure. You know, and I and I was thinking that might also be good against um, Scarab builds with like very little. Oh, yeah. Right, it's it's very open, and it and I'm closer to them than on Fountain of Asgard to be able to maybe get to them easier. Is my thought. I, I think that's pretty see fair. Scarab in Canada, but because Can Canadian meta is weird, <laughs> I don't know if we're going to see Scarab. But <laughs> yeah, you know, Scarab very much. I know other people have iterated this uh, sentiment where it's like he's the boogeyman because everyone is so concerned over him, but at the same time, it feels like almost no one is playing him. Which is, I don't know, it's a bit interesting because if he, I feel like if he really was so problematic and he was winning so much, then wouldn't he be played as much? And ultimately, like, maybe that's not the case just because of how, like, uninteractive he is. I think some people just feel bad for playing him. So, yeah, I mean, if you're not expecting Scarab, Wakanda, absolutely. Even if you were expecting Scarab, sorry. Phrase yes, that wrong. If I, if I am <laughs> expecting, yes. Like, yes. I don't think, I don't think I'm going to see him at Provincial's next weekend but i he may come up at uh, canadian nationals definitely it's a, a, like it's a different group because i'll be facing people that aren't local that aren't yeah the, as much weird stuff right like when you get to a national event people are gonna break out all the stuff all the yeah, stops, they bring right? out all the toys right <laughs> everything yeah and yeah if just general tip and scarab i feel like you never want to let him pick map 
because you're going straight to more lock tunnels and you're going to be digging through a lot of barriers. So I like yeah. the option of a nice open map where it's like, okay, it's going to be a bit limited on how much you can protect this guy. And I think you could see some success there. So I like that map yeah. choice for that. That's excellent. Yeah. Well, Emily, do you have any final thoughts, any shout outs you want to do? Anything really about hero clicks that you want to say before we conclude? Yeah, just uh, just I'm gonna reiterate the practice, and um, I'm I'm one of the odd ones that actually sits through and occasionally reads the comp. Like they just updated the comp again, and I'm literally reading it through. I, I I'll read like you know maybe ten pages a night, and I just I'm, <laughs> I'm sure that puts through. you right to bed, right? <laughs> Just right to no, sleep. No, <laughs> I, I, I love it. I love like looking at all the little words and that there's things where it's like, oh yeah, I knew that, but I, I don't, I didn't remember that kind of thing. It's like, oh yeah, oh, that's sure. how that interacts. And I found that just by knowing the rules really well, I've been able to like call opponents on things that they're doing that they thought they could do, but they can't, mm, you know? I like and that. I, I, yeah, so I, I found that that has really helped me in games by just knowing the rules really well. So I'm going to say read the comp. I know it's, it's, a, <laughs> it's, it's a, a daunting long task. Document. <laughs> it's tough. It's tough. But, but give it a read through, honestly. Don't just practice the figures, you know. <laughs> practice the knowledge, too. Get that comp out. Read it before bed. You know, get a couple pages in like Emily's saying. I'm sure you'll have a lot more success. I like it. <laughs> well, if you have anything else, if not... Uh, we'll go ahead and end it here. Yeah, I think that's about it. Thanks for having me on, Ian. Yeah, thank you so much, Emily, for doing this. I really like the team you're playing. I like that you're going against the grain and saying, you know what, I am going to play this one-man army. I love that you're also playing Prime Hulk. It's a very interesting build. I'm excited to see how you do, and I'm excited to see if the viewers at home here are interested in playing it themselves. Guys, thank you so much for watching. This has been Ian and Emily covering the meta, and we'll see you next week for another episode.